We've been discussing how public goods can lead to a market failure because of the free rider problem, which basically says that why would people want to pay for a public good if they believe it's going to be provided anyways and there's no way to exclude them from enjoying that good. So the question is, if we're going to have the government come in, if the government's going to play the role and provide the public good and then tax people or something so forth to fund it, the question is, well, what is the efficient quantity? What is the socially optimal, the socially efficient quantity of that public good in question? How do we determine? Let's say, for example, that we're talking about street lights. So we're thinking of installing some street lights in a neighborhood. We're trying to figure out, well, how many should, what is the socially efficient number of street lights? Well, the rule is that we want to do the number of street lights where the marginal social benefit is equal to the marginal, marginal social cost. Now, you might be thinking, hey, we've got an issue here. People don't buy public goods. They're not like private goods. It's not like we're just going to ask people in the neighborhood, hey, why don't you go out and buy your own street lights and, and so forth. So how do we figure out what is the total marginal social benefit? How do we figure that out? And what we could do, one way we could do it is we could basically ask each individual or try and figure out hypothetically what would be the marginal benefit to each individual? How much would they pay for one additional unit, one additional street light under different scenarios. So say, okay, if the quantity is X, how much would person A pay for one additional street light? And so then we could put together, once we know the, the preferences of the people, we can put together a demand curve for each person who lives in that neighborhood. And then we can sum those demand curves together and we put together what's basically called the collective demand curve. And then we map out that collective demand curve and that's going to be the marginal social benefit. And then where that's equal to the marginal social cost, where these two curves intersect, that's going to be the efficient quantity of the public good in question. So, for example, street lights. So let's just say, I just want to plot this out for you so it's a little less abstract. Let's say that we're using the example of street lights. And so let's say this is in thousands of dollars here. I know I have no idea how much it is for a street light. But let's say it's thousands of dollars, so 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. And let's say that the marginal cost, the marginal cost curve is here. It's, it's basically $5,000. That's the marginal cost of, of a street light. And we've got two people in this neighborhood, let's pretend. So we've got person one. Uh, their demand curve is this, this white line right here. That's their demand curve. And, and here's how I'm going to plot it out for you. So at a quantity of zero, at a quantity of zero at the origin there, this person, their marginal benefit from an additional additional street light would be six. It would be six. Now, if they were at, let's say we're at a quantity of one, then person one, their marginal benefit of an additional street light would be five. And so that's how I that's how I plotted out this line here. I just basically went and said, okay, what would be the marginal benefit at different quantities? And when you get to where there's six street lights, at that point, for person one, the marginal benefit of another street light is zero. So what, we, and then I've got person two here is the red line. So to come up with, with the collective demand curve, that's like the, think about it as like the total marginal benefit for all of society, of this society of two people here, this neighborhood. What we do is we add each together. So that might look a little hard to do, but if you think about it, let's go with at zero, quantity is zero. We add the marginal benefit of each person. So for person two, it would be three is their marginal benefit. And then for person uh, person one, it would be six. So six plus three is going to give us nine. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fill in right here here at at zero. When we have zero street lights, the marginal benefit of providing additional street light is nine. Now, for one street, assuming there's one street light, the marginal benefit would be two plus five. That would be the total. So that would be seven. And then if we were at two. Let's say there are two street lights. The marginal benefit of one more would be one right here for person two, and then four for person one. So four plus one is five. Oops. So four plus one is five. So we will be right here, five. And then now when we get to three, at this point it gets a little weird because person person two no longer has any marginal benefit. So it's basically the curve is just going to come in. With, with person one, because the total marginal benefit is just person one, which is three, 
And then at the four street lights, the marginal benefit would be two. And then at five, it would be one. And at six, it would be zero. At six, neither of these two people hits any more marginal benefit from an additional street light. So we can go and we can map this out. And I apologize for my drawing skills in advance. And basically this green curve, this green curve is the collective demand curve. That's the collective demand curve. So this is collective demand. And you could think of that as the marginal benefit. And remember, we said that how do we determine the, the, the optimal, the socially efficient level of this public good of streetlights? So we're going to do it where the marginal benefit, this is our marginal benefit, the total marginal benefit, equals the marginal cost, right? So where the marginal benefit equals the marginal cost, that's our socially efficient level. And so we see here's our marginal cost curve right there. It's in purple. And then here's our marginal benefit curve. So right here is where the two curves intersect. See that? See this purple line? And then the green line right here, they intersect. That's where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. And we say, well, what is the quantity there? What is the quantity? The quantity at that point is two. So what that means is that the efficient, the socially efficient, amount of street lights the amount where the total marginal benefit the collective marginal benefit equals the marginal cost for this neighborhood would be two so that means that they should the socially efficient level of street lights would be two